We covered the electrocardiogram in lab in um, some detail, but we also need to cover it in lecture at least so you can kind of understand how the electrical events of the heart coordinate the contraction um, on a more holistic level. So let me introduce you to the electrocardiogram. The ECG, as it is called, is a recording of the sum of all electrical activity, uh, technically speaking, within the body, but based on the placement of the leads to record this electrical activity, the heart is the main contributor to it. And so the ECG can be used to determine heart function and to examine um, the, the way that the heart is contracting. The electrical events of the heart will always precede the force of contraction. And so what we want to do is, is kind of take a look at this. I do want to, before we dive into the different segments and such, I want to make sure that you understand that there's a big difference between the ECG, which is the sum of all electrical activity, and an action potential recorded in a single cell. Now, um, the action potential triggers the ventricle contraction, and that's going to be the event that occurs in this yellow region here. But this is recorded from a single cell, whereas this is recorded from the surface of the body based on placements of these electrodes, of these leads, and is, as I mentioned, a, uh, the sum of all of the electrical activity. Let's look at these different parts then. So here we see um, an EKG. Now, the morphology or the, the way that an EKG looks is going to be different based on the position of the leads and which lead we're recording from and so forth. This is the typical ECG that is shown to when we're talking ECGs to introduce the different parts. Um, but there's definitely some variation that would be considered normal. Let's look at these segments, and we're going to start first with just this P wave right here. Uh, this P wave corresponds to atrial depolarization. So the P wave would depolarize the atria would depolarize, after which the atria would begin to contract and push the blood into the ventricle. Following atria depolarization, the atria is going to repolarize, but the wave representing the repolarization is actually lost. It's lost within this QRS region right here. So we're going to follow this Anytime you see a flat line without any upward or downward deflection, upward, so the P wave would be upward reflect deflection, Q and S are downward deflections, just so you're familiar with that vocabulary. Um, the lines here would, are called isoelectric lines. And so you can have see our P wave followed by a short isoelectric line and then we end up with the Q wave, which is a downward deflection, followed by the R and the S, which is another downward deflection. And then we go back to another isoelectric line. This QRS is ventricle depolarization. And as you can see, it's quite large, which makes sense considering the size of the ventricle. So the ventricle is going to depolarize prior to contraction. And you can even see um, we're going to get that depolarization here before we actually get the buildup of force. Now, um, the T wave then, so after the ventricle depolarizes, it needs to repolarize. And that repolarization is this T wave. Now we have different intervals and segments that we uh, examine in lab. Uh, 
So the PR interval starts at the beginning of the P wave and goes to the end of the Q wave. So right at the beginning of the R wave. The ST interval starts at the beginning of the S wave and goes to the end of the T wave. The PQ segment is the end of the P wave to the beginning of the Q. And QRS complex, as you can see, includes the entire complex there. And then the ST segment is shown here. Um, for lab, you'll need to know where to find that information. For lecture, the extent of my questions would be mostly about the electrical activity preceding contraction, but I might also ask you to identify the P, Q, R, S, and the T. I would not ask you to identify the segments or the intervals. Now, here we can actually see this going piece by piece as to what we get. So here you can see the atria depolarization right here in the beginning of the P wave as we start the SA node, remembers right here, and as we spread to the right atria, and then from the right atria into the left atria, that gives us our whole little blip for my P wave there. And uh, you can see each step involved with the electrical signal shown in yellow spreading to the different segments. Once we hit that AV node, we're going to get that isoelectric line as we get this AV delay. Okay. And then the atria is going to repolarize, shown in green, during this QRS segment. But we, we can't see it. We can't see anything corresponding to that because it's hidden in this QRS segment. The uh, QRS segment, though, is due to ventricle repolarization, or depolarization, I should say. And remember that it starts at the apex and spreads upward. Okay. And then we get the repolarization, uh, which you can see in green, again, starting at the apex and spreading upward. And so that's going to be your T wave here. And so you can see these different segments and how they correspond. Now, last, let's go and take a look. We're going to see part of the Wiggers diagram again, and this should be familiar to you. We've already walked you through this part here. Now notice the atrial pressure and the aortic pressure are missing. That's okay for right now, because what we're really interested in is what happens with the ventricle. Now look, you can see my P wave, and do you see how it proceeds atrial contraction, right? You can kind of line that up, the P wave proceeding. In fact, why don't I go ahead and just draw a line there, and you can see this, you know, from the peak of atrial systole. Whoops, my line's not very straight. But you kind of get it, right? Whoops, yeah, that's a really not straight line at all. Um, but nevertheless, you can see the correspondence there to the electrical activity occurring first before we get our contraction. And then you can see my R hitting again before the buildup of force in the ventricle. And then my T um, beginning uh, once we start getting into atrial depolarization. I'm sorry, ventricle repolarization. And so you can kind of see those um, as they line up here. Now the other part of this that I want you to know about is this lub, dub, heart sounds. And I did talk about these already, so the purpose of this is really just to show you where it lines up. And so you can see that the QRS precedes the closing of the AV valve and the T wave um, about the center. Uh, it begins before the closing of the semilunar valves. And uh, that's essentially what you should know from this figure.